Hey, I'm Reed Bailey. We're back for part two of the statistical test selection video focused on single factor statistics. I do want to remind you we have this statistical test selection guide available at the URL shown on the screen. And in part one, we talked about parametric tests and non-parametric tests, which means it's time now to get down to frequency and distribution tests, things like test of proportions and chi-square. All right, so dealing with categorical dependent variables, we can ask questions like this. Is the prevalence or distribution of different brands of shoes the same for men and women in 2020? So our independent variable could be gender and our dependent variable would be shoe brands. And you can see right now, if we were to try to run a t-test on this, that's not possible. You can't take an average of ASICs and Nike. Those are categories, right? Can't run a non-parametric test for that. What you do is you could count up, right? Each type of shoe among women and each type of shoe among men. And so while our raw data looks, as you see here, let's look at what our summarized or tabulated data could look like. Females, here's how many different people were wearing different brands of shoes. And males, here's how many people were wearing different brands of shoes. How would you tell if the prevalent, the relative prevalence of the different brands is the same between females and males? Well, just eyeballing it, it looks like for men, it's, they're pretty equally distributed, right? The different types of shoes. And for women, it looks like Adidas is really unusual to see and New Balance, not so common. Asics, Brooks, and Nike are, are the most common types. So it looks like their distributions are different. What kind of test would you run to see if they were di different? This is where you run a chi-square test. Um, and the result from that would determine would tell you, is this difference we think we see between the distribution, the relative prevalence between males and females, is it statistically significant? So now we're looking at the question of, is the prevalence or distribution of each shoe brand the same for eight different age groups in 2020? So our dependent variable is still the same thing, the shoe brand type, but now we're saying we wanna take age and we wanna put it into eight different bins bins based on maybe the categories, the race categories at that race. And so one of our first steps in our stat package or our spreadsheet is to actually assign each age, the raw data into a bin. Now these bins are ordinal, right, in, in order, but we can treat them as a category to say, is the distribution of shoes in each of these eight bins similar or not? We're treating age bin as just a category if we're thinking about it in this case. And really, what's the difference between an independent variable and a dependent variable um, starts to kind of wash away when you're dealing with chi-square or other kind of frequency-based tests like test of proportions. We're really just looking at, is there a relationship between two variables? But I'll continue to use the phrase sort of dependent variable and independent variable. That has to more to do with the way the question is asked than actually the statistical test. So we're gonna summarize the data for each of these uh, age bins. In this case, it would look something like this. Here are the eight age bins. Here are the five different shoe types. And if you remember, when we're in with parametric tests, if you went from two levels, like male and female, to three or more levels, in this case, we have eight levels for our independent variable, it changes from a t-test to ANOVA. Well, that's one of the nice things about frequency and distribution statistics. Our last, when we had males and females in shoe, shoe brands, it was a chi-square test. And now it's still a chi-square test. So the number of levels that you have for your independent variables um, doesn't work the same way as it does for parametric tests when you're dealing with frequency tests like chi-square and test of proportions. Hmm. Is the prevalence of Nike shoes the same for men and women in 2020? That is, is the proportion wearing Nikes the same for men and women? So here, just like we made a new variable based on age, we made a new variable called age bin, we're gonna make a new variable to relate our independent variable of gender to now based on the shoe brand column. So 
we would make a new column that said, well, is this a Nike shoe? And put a zero in it if it's not a Nike, put a one in it if it is a Nike. Or you could put not Nike and Nike in that column. Put whatever you want. Uh, and that's going to become our dependent variable. Then, okay, let's same kind of thing we've done before. Let, let's summarize this data. The summary of data in this case is a small little two by two table, male, female, Nike, or not Nike. And we could even go further to say, well, what percent of women wear Nikes and what percent of men wear Nikes? About 25.6% of women and 20.9% of men wear Nikes. Is this difference in percentage big enough to say it's statistically significant? Now, while technically you could run a chi-square on this, when you have a two by two table, a stronger test to run is the two sample test of proportions. On the summarized data that I've been showing you on the right side of the screen, um, if you would have said, well, this looks like a chi-square test, but you notice it's a two by two table, the more appropriate test is a two sample test of proportions. How about, is the prevalence of Nikes the same for the eight different age groups in 2020? So is the proportion wearing Nikes the same among the eight age groups? In this case, we have Nike or not, has one of our variables. We also have the age bin, right? Each of these are constructed uh, columns from our base data. And now we're gonna take these. Notice on our question, is the proportion wearing Nikes the same for these eight age groups? Seems like maybe we should use a test of proportions based on the way that's worded. Look at our summarized table though. We have Nike and not Nike for the eight different age groups. And you can see the percentages. The percentages are quite different, ranging from about 3.4% all the way up to almost 60% for different age groups wearing Nikes in this race. Hmm, it would be great if there was such thing as an eight sample test of proportions, but there's not. You can either do a one sample test of proportions or a two sample test of proportions. If you get bigger than a two sample test of proportions, you've got to go to chi-square to run this test because we have, uh, there, there are no tests uh, for proportions that are when you have three or more that you're comparing um, that, that run like a test of proportions run. So you have to use the chi-square test instead. So uh, you heard someone claim that a majority of people wear ASIC shoes. How can you test this? Hmm, a majority of people. Well, you can make a column just like we did for Nike that says ASICs, one or zero. And this is really our only variable. We're looking at over everybody. If we were to summarize this data, 88 were ASICs, 288 didn't wear ASICs. That's about 23.4%. Is this different than 50%? Well, this is where you use a one sample test of proportions and you would compare it to 50% with a one-sided test. So is it equal or greater than 50%? Uh, the percent that are wearing ASICs in the real data. So a one by two table is a one sample test of proportions. A two by two is a two sample test of proportions. Any other size summarized data for our frequency statistics, you're on a chi-square test. All right, so we've talked about three major types of single factor statistical tests, parametric, ANOVA, t-test, pair t-test, non-parametrics, Kruskal Wallace, Man Whitney, Will Coxon, and frequency, things where you're counting up categories, which are um, test of proportions and chi-square is what we talked about here. So a common place to be after a stats class is to have a whole bunch of different statistical tests that you know, but you don't know when to apply which one. And all the ones we talked about today are when we have a single factor or single independent variable. And knowing which one to run depends first and foremost on, well, what question do you want to answer? Are you concerned about central tendency values like medians and means, or are you concerned about distributions of values? Now, once you know that, you know your dependent variable. And then it's, well, what kind of scale is your dependent variable? Is it categorical? Is it ordinal? Is it interval? Is it ratio? If it's interval or ratio, is it normally distributed? And of course, that maps directly back onto 
frequency statistics versus non-parametric versus parametric statistics. And you also need to know a few things about the independent variable, such as the number of levels. Only two levels, you can run an independent samples t-test or a two sample test of proportions. More than that, tests like ANOVA and chi-square are good. And finally, if the independent variable levels are paired, are you measuring the same thing more than once, like in the case of a paired t-test, or is everything just being measured once, like is the case for most other tests? Wow, so that is a ton to remember, which is why we have at the URL above this statistical test selection guide that has not only what we've already covered, it also has additional information such as the assumptions of each test. We didn't cover these at all in this video. We do in some other videos and we give a summary of them here on this table. So, hey, there you have it. Now you've got all you need to know which test to select for single factor statistics.